Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this video, I want to do something different than usual. I edit videos for YouTube for the last uh, seven or eight years now, and I've always used Adobe Premiere. And a lot of photographers are getting into videos. I often get asked, like, what software should I use to uh, edit my videos? Recently, I switched to a software which is completely free called DaVinci Resolve. I've heard about the software because it's made by Blackmagic. There is a free version and there's a studio version. The, the free version is unbelievable. I've been using it for months now and I'm just learning it and there is no limitation. I, my understanding was that the free version had some kind of limitation, like you could export 4K, but it's not the case. You can do a lot of things with the free version. I think if you're a photographer and you just want to do some cool videos, the free version will be enough for life. I have rarely seen a software that I felt in love so much in DaVinci Resolve. It's completely free. I cannot believe how they do it, but I want to give you a little tutorial on how to use it. And the way I like to teach is with an example. So we're going to be doing a really cool drone shot like this one. This is what you're gonna learn. I'm gonna show you everything from importing to uh, doing the editing to the retouching, which is amazing in DaVinci Resolve, which is a big strength. I mean, DaVinci Resolve is being used by most biggest movies right now in the world. I think it has become the industry standard for big movies and you can have it and it's not that hard to learn. Dive in with me and I'm gonna give you a really fast quick start course on how to get started on DaVinci Resolve. First of all, you go to blackmagic.com. The link is going to be below this video and you click here on download. You got two versions. On the left side, you have the free version. On the right side, you have the paid version. Now I've already installed the version, so I'm going to launch it. Okay. So here we are. This is the first page you get on DaVinci Resolve. When you install it, just go through the installation. It's very self-explanatory, but this is what you get when you launch it. And, um, so this is different projects I did. I'm going to, let's going to create, we're going to create a new project call test drone because it's a drone shot. I already have actually one created. So this one, I'm just going to show you how it is when you create. So test drone true, I call it this way. So this is when it starts. Okay. You've got different space here. And the first thing you want to do when you start a project is get some media inside. Okay. You see, it says no clip in media. So you can right click here and you can say import media or you do command I on a Mac or control I on a, on windows. So here I've got a whole bunch of drone shot and I've got a music that I'm going to be using. The music that I use is from Epidemics. You have a link below in the video. Okay. So when it's importing, it says a clip of different frame rate than the current project settings. That's fine. I'm going to click on change. Now, when you retouch drone footage, usually, and when I, I use a Mavic Pro 2 in H265, so H265 is just a, a way of compressing the video that's kind of new. Uh, what we've been using for a long time in the H.264. The problem with H.265 is that it's really hard. It can be lagging on your computer. So Da Vinci has a way to create something that we call a proxy. A proxy is just a lighter version of your video. So this is the first thing we're going to do before we do anything. So to create a proxy, all you have to do is select all the drone videos, right click and click generate optimize media. So I've already done all the generate media option, meaning I created a smaller version of the videos. But the, the good thing about the software is complete transparent. You won't even notice it. You know, uh, by default, you're going to be using this instead of the original H265, which is really hard and might be slow for your computer. So once you've done that, one option that I love uh, that I didn't have in Adobe Premiere is what they call the cut page. And there is one feature which is amazing because a lot of stuff that I do is kind of vlog where I just go out and take a lot of drone shots or a lot of behind the scene. And so I have a lot of footage and I'm only going to be using a few seconds here and there, but it takes me a lot of time to locate this good part. They have a feature which makes it so much easier. You'll see it's unbelievable. The feature is you first got to click here on this icon called source tape. When you click on that, you can see here, I've got four clips and they're all back to back already on this sort of temporary timeline. And then I can scrub through really fast and see what's happening. And so if there is something that I like, like on this one, I kind of like this shot, I'm going to press I for an in point and I'm going to move forward. And this is just like a, a really rough cut. And I'm going to press O for an out point. 
So I have this and now I'm going to click here on this icon here called insert and it's going to insert this on my timeline. You can see here now on my timeline I only have this clip here. I actually have to go here on the timeline but you see it added a clip here and if I play it it's just that part. So let's carry on. So now I can just move further and see if there is another section I'd like to. Oh yeah, I like that part here. That part's kind of cool. So I'm going to press I. Move my slider. Yeah, go here. Out. And then I'm going to press Insert. Okay. And it's just going to add all the clips. It's just taking the best part of, you know, I got maybe like 10 minutes of footage and we're only going to be using like 30 seconds. So then I keep on just scrubbing to see if there's any other parts that I like. Uh, I know on this one I wanted the end. I, I did several runs through and it was the last one that was the best because I've prepared this video of course. So let's see here. Uh, here uh, I'm just scrubbing through and because I did this proxy so the smaller video I can scrub through really fast. It's really very handy. Okay I like this part here when I'm on the tree so I'm going to press I and then I'm going to move further. Okay the camera goes up in the sky. I like that. Ooh I like that. Okay O and boom, I just put it on my timeline. And let's and I keep on doing that. So now it's another clip here. This one was taken from high above. Ooh, I like this part here. So I'm gonna press I. I'm gonna scrub really fast. Ooh, I'm going up. I like that. O F9. And then I carry on. Okay. This one, oh yeah, it's this part that I really like. I I'm turning around the sun. On the beautiful tree. Oh no, it's actually further down, I think. Uh, where is it? No, it's here. Uh, I think I missed it. I'm just going really fast. I know this clips really well. Yeah, you see this tree here? I went around that tree. Uh, so the eye actually starts a little earlier and I'm just going around. Yes. Oh, boom. All right, so now I got my basic, basic clips here. Now I can go to edit. All I did was, I mean, this used to take me forever on Adobe Premiere. I think this function of putting all the clips back to back and you just go in and out, F9, in and out, F9 or insert, sorry. It's just so fast. Okay, so now we can go to the second tab, which is the edit. So you can see here, I got all my clips. Now, I said earlier that I use D-Log. D-Log means DGI log. And log means basically, it's kind of like shooting row. It's not exactly like shooting row but you get a very high dynamic range file, but it looks very black and white, it's very neutral. So you have to do a lot of color correction. But first we're gonna do the edit and then we'll do the color correction. And I like to edit with music. So I've got this amazing clip from Epidemic Sound, which is here. Um, and I'm gonna... All right, so you can hear some of it here. And I'm gonna drag and drop this under the, the drone shot. So. This is the audio section, okay? And you can see the music is really loud. It's a very loud rock and roll music, but I love it. I love rock and roll. And now I have to decide which part do I want to put first. Let me lower the sound of my computer a little bit. Okay, which sound? I think I'm going to start with this clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this clip here and I'm going to move this clip away for now. I'm just going to move this clip away. And I'm going to start with this one. Okay, and let's play it. So when the music starts, I, would, I want to do like an accelerate. I want to speed up the video so that it speeds up just when the music starts. That could be kind of cool. So the first thing I'm going to do is I, I, I need to zoom in on my timeline. So you can zoom in here with minus and plus. What I like to do is use the option key here. Use the option key and the middle mouse and you can zoom in and out on your timeline. So I'm going to zoom in and um, I, I want to make this audio a little shorter. I want to, st so what I can do here, you see when you come to the border of a clip, I can click and drag. I'm going to start about here. I, I can drag this, so now it's starting here. But so that it has a smooth start, you can see here there's a little uh, dot here. I can click and drag it. So it's going to make, it's going to start from like no sound to full sound, you know, in a few seconds, like a transition. Okay, now to move my clip, I'm just going to click and drag and move it at the start. So now what I want to do is I want to, I want to do a, like a, a time remapping it's called. Basically slow motion and fast motion. You'll see it's so cool. So I, I'm going to play this.
Yes, you see this section here? I want to go very fast to that point. I want to have like a, a very fast. So to do that, I'm uh, to do like a time remapping. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go here to um, read time controls. Okay, and then you're going to see this whole small arrows here. So my idea is I want from this point to this point things to be speed up. So the first thing I need to do is add what we call a speed point. You see now I've got a speed point and you see here it says 100% and here it says 100%. Now watch this magic. If I move this like this, look what it's going to do. The video here is now 368 times faster, so almost time four times faster and then it's going to go back to normal. So let's play it to see how it looks like. Okay, so the music is really interesting here. And so what you can do is here, I'm gonna press, I'm gonna click this, the audio and press M, okay? Because I want uh, this point to be exactly here. So when I move this to the left or to the right, it basically speeds up this part here, okay? And if I move that, what it's doing is that it's moving to what point of video is this is going to stop speeding up. So I can position this exactly here and now it's going to speed up at 220 from here and it's going to go back to normal here just when the music changes. So let's watch it. Okay, I actually, you know what, I want this to go faster so I'm going to start the music even later like this. And now what I need to do is I know the interesting part is still here, so I'm going to move this. Check this out. I'm going to move this here. No, sorry. I'm going to move this one here. Exactly. So now it's going at. It's going to go really fast and it's going to slow down here. So check it out. Yeah, I like that effect. Okay, I'm going to cut it here about and now I'm going to take the next clip. So all I have to do is click and drag the corners to cut it. So now, so a little very useful shortcut is if you want to see your entire timeline, you just press shift Z and you can see the entire timeline. So I can, now I'm going to take this clip here and I'm going to drag and drop it here. Also another trick you can do if you want to make sure to uh, make this one go here, you can click here and press delete and that's going to make it stuck here. I'm going to use my option, key, my option, middle mouse to uh, zoom in. Okay, and same thing here. So same thing, I want to do like a little accelerate. So I'm, I'm holding the option key in my middle mouse to zoom out. I want to see the entire clip. Okay. So hold on. Bam. Okay, I'm going to start here, my clip, because I don't want to have this, uh, the camera going up and down. I just want one movement. Let's see here. Okay, and I want to do a little acceleration, same thing. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to do retime control. Okay, and here I'm going to create another speed point. And all I have to do to speed up the left side is drag the, here like this. And now check this out. I actually want to increase the speed a lot more. So I'm going to go here. Yeah, like that. Okay, and here, like on the beat, I'm going to take another clip. So I'm going to go here, make this smaller. Okay, I can click here and press delete and it's going to drag the, uh, the next one. Okay, this one is, I want to use at the end because it's really nice. So I'm going to take this one here and let's see what we're going to use on this one. So same thing here. Yeah, I want to speed things up. So for all of this part, I want to speed it up. So same thing, right click, time, remap, remapping control or it's command R. And then let's zoom in with using the Alt key and the middle mouse. Okay, I'm going to create here a speed point. And you know, this is just, there's a lot more to it, but I want to, this is a beginner tutorial. I don't want to go into too much details. And then I'm going to click and drag this all the way 
want to make this, oops, sorry, Command Z, I did a mistake. You got to drag in the top one, the top one. So you see everything is like here is going to be really fast, like five times faster and here is going to be normal. So let's see it. I actually even want to go faster. And on that beat, I'm going to take the last clip. So I select this part here, press delete. And um, so same thing here, I, I'm going to use the same technique. So the option, the alt key, I want to go to, oh, there's another clip I didn't use here. What is this one? Let's see here. Oh, this one is kind of cool too. Same idea. So I'm going to put this one here, same idea. So, okay, uh, Command R to do the speed ramp. Go here, add a spin point, and let's zoom in a bit more to see what we're doing. And boom, I'm gonna speed that up a lot. Maybe even move this to the right. Okay, so here it's very speedy, here it's normal. Let's see. Okay, I actually want more of speed, so I can just move this to the right. See, if you move this to the left, the, the, the part that's getting speed up becomes less and the part, the part that's 100% becomes more. If I move to the right, it's the reverse. I have more part being speeded up than part that it's being slowed down. And here is how much speed I want. So something like this. Okay, maybe that's a little much. Okay, something like this. Okay, and one last clip, and the last clip here, boom. So same thing on this one, I'm gonna zoom out. I wanna go all the way to the tree. Yeah, I wanna go all the way to the end, same technique, so you can go right click, um, read time control or command R, go here, add a speed point, and c'est parti mon kiki, you know the drill. I'm doing it over and over and over again so you can see how easy it is to make really cool effects. Okay. Okay, I don't like the beginning, so I'm gonna cut the beginning a bit. I think I wanna add a little more speed. Okay. Yeah, I love that effect. Okay, now just to finish it off, this is just an exercise. Of course, this is not the way I would edit this video. I'm gonna go here. I'm going to take the cutter, I'm going to cut here, oops, come cut here, and then I'm going to take the arrow and I'm going to click that and I'm going to erase this with delete. Okay, so my basic edit is done. Now let's jump into color correction. Let's see how it looks before color correction. So Shift Z to see the entire timeline and let's watch it. Oh yeah, to, to, so to make the ending a bit nicer, I'm gonna, you see here, I'm gonna click and drag to make the music start going slow. So, okay, and the ending is gonna be like this now. Voila. And I'm gonna add a 12 frame class dissolve and now look at this. Cross dissolve just means it goes to black. So, I like, that's my first rough edit. Let's go into color now and let's correct. Now the color is amazing. I mean, I come from the world of Lightroom where I can do a lot of things with colors. DaVinci Resolve color module is insane. So I'm gonna take the first clip and uh, basically I'm gonna go here. So you have all the clips here and you have all the tools here. And I'm gonna go here and I, I wanna go to where we can see the sky here. Okay, and I'm gonna make this really simple because it's, I could do a two hours video on color correction with on DaVinci without even scratching the surface. But make sure you have the scopes here. This is to have the scope. And the one I want to use is not Parade, it's called Waveform. Waveform to me is very similar than the histogram. Basically, this is the blacks, this is the white, and this is the middle. You can see this, um, there is not much contrast. We don't have pure blacks and we don't have pure whites, okay? Here we have a lot of different tools. I'm just gonna use this tool here, 
which is uh, it's called Lift Gamma Gain. It's like the classic correction tool. Lift is basically the darker tones, gamma is the middle tones, and gain is the, is the brighter tones. So all I want to do on this one is I want to make sure that I've got some dark tones. So I can take this wheel here, you see, until the wave touches the bottom. Okay, good. And then I can do the opposite. I can move the gain. You see the gain here, I have a lot of info here. So this info, I, I can make sure it's all, all the way at the top. And then you can decide here, you know, what, what you can do. Uh, if you want it to be a bit darker in the middle or more, something like this, I kind of like. All right. And uh, so on this tool here, so you click here, this is there's three different tools. Okay, we're using number one. Here you got two different panels, one and two. Okay, two is all about the temperature. I, I may maybe make it a little bit warmer. So to the left, it gets blue. To the right, it gets warmer, just like the white balance in Lightroom. So I'm going to be a bit warmer. But I'm going to do something very important because raw files don't have color. So you have to, uh, color boost, I'm going to use like 20 or 25 of color boost. It's going to bring back a lot of colors, okay? So that's the basic correction for this. I can go and even add a bit more contrast. Contrast is here. You, you also have a contrast lighter. So I can add even more contrast. Uh, maybe add a bit more saturation on, on top of the color boost. It's just two ways of making colors more vivid. But I kind of like that. I, I'm kind of happy with that retouch. And if you want to see the before and after, so the way Da Vinci works, it has what we call nodes. Nodes are exactly like layers in Photoshop. It basically, except that in Photoshop, layers are being read from top down to bottom. Nodes are being read from left to right. But it's the same thing. It's basically layers where you're giving instructions for things to do. So that first node took care of the contrast. Now. One thing that's amazing on DaVinci, and this, the one thing I love in Lightroom, is to be able to use gradients. I want to put a gradient to make the sky a little more intense. So I'm going to create another node just for the sky. So I'm going to right click, and I'm going to create, I'm going to go to add node, add a serial. So what is a serial node? Serial node is the basic node, to make it simple. Okay, so now i got a second node, and this one is only going to be for the sky. So how do we retouch just the sky? Well. Da Vinci has this incredible tool here. If you click here on something called Power Windows, this is amazing. Check this out. There's a, a setting here called Gradient. I just one click and now I got a gradient. Okay. So I can go back here and I can lower my highlights. I can add some blue in my highlights. I can lower my midtones and you can see it's only doing it on the top of the sky. See here I have a gradient. You can see the gradient really clearly. Actually, it's too abrupt, so I want to make it smoother. Well, if I go back to my power window here, I got a, a softness. I can soften that gradient. Check this out. Now I got a nice gradient for the sky. Okay, and just like in Lightroom, so I, I'm going to put this here. And, and if you want to see without the node, like without the layers, just like on Photoshop, you would click on the eye to see if what a layer is doing or not doing. You press Command D. So check this out. Before, after, all I did is I added some blue back in the sky. Okay? And here I can go on this node and do Command D, before, after, before, after. Amazing. So now that we're here, this one is a very overexposed. Uh, so when I, when I take a clip that's very different exposure, I don't copy and paste what I did just before. I'm going to start over. So I'm going to go here to this tool. I'm going to start over completely. I'm going to crush my blacks. Okay, really hard yeah, until I get some blacks. Uh, let's see my whites. I'm going to move my whites here and then I just play around in the middle. Okay, I think I want to I want to boost saturation at 60 like we did before because it's there's not much colors. 60 and I'm going to go to 2 and I'm going to do color boost like 20 because this is a, a log file. Log files I use like raw file. They're lack of color. So check this out. 20. Boom. There's more colors. I think I want to go back to number one and add a bit more contrast. And voila, that's it. Uh, check it out. So I'm going to play it now. Maybe a little strong on colors. I'm going to go to color boost. Uh, I'm going to go maybe just 10. 10 is good. Oh, I put 100. That's not good. That's not good. 100 is like, ooh. So I'm going to put this at 10. Okay, now I like it. I like it. It's really nice. Okay, let's go to the next clip.
So on this one, uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to take the, the retouching that I did here and put it here. So all you have to do is you are on the clip that you want to retouch and you can right click here and, and go to apply grade and boom, it's done. Okay, it doesn't work. That's okay. So I can I can adjust. Well, this one's actually really underexposed, so it's not going to work. It's fine. So what you can do is I'm just going to go here. I'm going to delete this node and this one I'm going to reset not grade. Okay, so let's do it over. I thought it was going to work. It didn't work. Maybe we can try this grade. So I can go here. I can try this. Let's try this one. Apply grade. No, it doesn't work either because this was, was overexposed. This one was underexposed. It's fine. So I'm going to reset the nod and I'm going to go back to my basic tool here and I'm going to crush my blacks. There's a lot of blacks here. I'm going to and I'm going to move my whites here a little bit and move my mid tones a lot. Mid tones. You see, I'm moving my mid tones and I need to recrush my blacks. I really want to have data all the way. I want to have some darkness in it. Not too much. Maybe that's a little too much. Yes. And then some whites here, maybe not so much white. Okay. And then let's go color boost. Let's uh, do 20 on this one. I like 20 on color boost. No, too much. Oh, because I, I, I keep doing 100. I don't know why. I want to do 20. Okay. And then we need to do something about that sky. So let's create another nod. Uh, well, let's see here. Let's see if we can do something better with the retouching. Uh, let's move up the gamma. Bring on a bit the highlights. I want to go back to here and maybe just add a bit more saturation. So you can also just move here like this saturation and uh, a bit more contrast. All right. Let's see the white balance. If I go left or right, I think I want to go left. It's, it was a very blue scene. So I'm going to go blue a bit like this. I think I want to make this darker a little bit more. Just crash the blacks a bit more. I think my this one was really badly exposed, but it's still going to look cool at the end. I think my color boost is too strong. So I'm going to go back to 10. Yes, that's better. And I want to do something about the sky. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to add another node, another node, serial. Okay. And I'm going to go back to my power window, add a gradient. I love this tool. It's crazy. Go back here to this basic tool and I'm just going to lower the sky, add more blue in the sky. Look at this and make it, make it a bit darker. Okay. I'm going to go back here to my power window. And I'm going to soften this gradient. You see how it goes become softer. And then I can just move this up and boom. Let's see how it looks now. Ooh, it kind of looks cool. It kind of looks cool. Okay. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. This was a very damaged. Uh, this was a really poorly exposed drone shot, but it's still going to look good. It's only a few seconds. I think it's going to look okay. And um, I like that. Okay. So uh, next one is this clip here and I'm hoping this clip, the first grade is going to do wonders on it. So are you ready for this? Right click, apply grade. So boom, no, still not. Come and Z, we can try this grade here. Uh, that's why sometimes I'm lazy. I just, okay, you see, oh, this grade actually did work really great on this one. I just, and so now I've got everything. I've got the sky retouch. Actually, you want to make this a bit higher like this, voila. Ooh, I like it. It's nice. It's nice. Okay. Next clip here. Uh, let's see if we can apply this grade here. Right click, apply grade. Okay. Uh, we don't need this one. So I can right click and delete this node because I don't need to do the sky. That's not bad. It's yeah, it's, it needs a bit more contrast. That's fine. Uh, let's go back to this node. Let's go back to this tool and let's crush our blacks big time. Yeah. But at least we got the colors. Let's bring down the highlights, something like this. I think I'm going to like that. Voila. Woo. Voila. Okay. So now let's, we can watch it now with, so shift Z to see the whole timeline. Let's rewatch it with a color correction and see how it looks like. All right. I love it. I mean, it's, it's a little blue to me, to be honest. Uh, and if you want to do a, co a color correction, it's fine. You can just go to colors looking at it. I think the whole thing is a little too blue. So I, I'm, I'm going to go back here on a basic nod and you can just tweak it how you want it. I can change the temperature. I'm going to make it a bit warmer here. This one I kind of like this one. I think I want to make it a bit warmer. So I go to back here 
and I'm going to go on the first time. That's where, oh, sorry, second time. I'm going to make it a bit warmer, just a tad. This one, I think I want to make it a bit warmer. Uh, you got to click on the node first to make sure you're on the right node. And I'm going to make it a bit warmer. Yeah, just a bit tad warmer, maybe a bit more contrast. I mean, then you tweak it to your liking, you know, something like this. And this one, I would definitely want to make it warmer. It's too cold. So I'm going to go here, click on the nod, and I'm going to make it a lot warmer. Yeah, a lot warmer. Yeah, I like that. Okay, I like that. That's kind of cool. So let's watch it again. Okay, on this one, there's a transition that, that I don't like. It's a little slow. I, I want to make this smaller so I can just bring this down here. And you see, I show you, if you bring your mouse here on, between two clips, you can see there's like two brackets. If I do that, I can, if I go left, I'm going to make the left uh, clip shorter and the right clip longer, okay? And, but if I go here, not in the middle, but here, I am just bringing this one a bit shorter and I can bring this one a little bit home and because uh, I didn't like the ending on this one. Okay, now I like my edit. Uh, one last thing, let's, let's add a cool title. I want to add a cool title here. Yeah, I'm going to add a title here. So I'm going to go here on the left side. I can click here. You click on Effect Library. You click on Titles. I'm going to use what we call Fusion Titles. So Fusion Titles are like more advanced kind of titles. Fusion is like a sort of after effect that's included in DaVinci Resolve. And that's a whole different tutorial. This is just like a really beginner intro kind of thing. And there's a title I kind of like, it's called, I'm going to take this one, I'm going to call Title Draw on Corners to Line. It's really a title I kind of like. And I'm just going to make it start here and make it finish here. And voila. Uh, voila, voila. So here's my title. I need to change the text. So to be able to change the text, you just have to make sure the inspector, and you click here on the inspector, click on the text, and top line, I'm going to put a video by... And then this, I go down here to see the second, the bottom text, and uh, I'm gonna go here, Serge Ramelli. So now we got a cool text, and let's watch the video now with the cool text. Oh, you see, when it's red, it means it needs to be rendered. So I waited, and it's rendering in background. So I'm just, I waited a little bit, so now, we can see the, t the title better. So let's rewatch it. Actually, you know what? I need to put the, the animation all the way because there's a cool animation that I'm missing. So let's do it. Okay, I need to move this to the right and this like this. You just position the title how you want it. I, I don't want the title to be at first. Okay, so now we are ready to export, and that's the last module, which is Deliver. We just go here, and I'm going to just take YouTube as a preset. I'm going to call it um, My Intro English, okay, and I'm going to put it in some folder, okay, and now you click here to Add to Render Queue, and you go Start Render, and it's going to render the entire project, and we are ready to see the video. So here is the final video. Okay, I could find tweaks, a little things. The whole idea was to, I like to show by example, there's so much more. There is, uh, I'm gonna put also some link of amazing YouTube channel that I love, how I learned Da Vinci. I cannot believe that such a powerful software can be free. I really encourage you, if you like video, to download Da Vinci, just play around. It's just free and it's amazing. I hope you like this uh, tutorial. And let me know in the comment if you want more of this kind of tutorial on other topics than just Lightroom. 
And if you do, I will obey your orders. Mesdames et messieurs, I'll see you in my next video.